Welcome back folks, my name is Lyle Snowmeal and today we're gonna be talking about Adam Smasher. We're gonna see where he comes from, how he became a cyborg and how dangerous he actually is. So let's get into it. Adam Smasher was born in New York City. Now keep in mind, even during that time he was just a common thug in a gang which was known to actually mutilate people, which was known to do all kinds of horrendous crimes. Now, after his gang was completely wiped out and he was one of the only people who survived, he later went and joined the army. There he got all of the military skills and discipline he's going to use later on in his brutality as he became a cyborg. But nevertheless, even in the army itself, he was extremely brutal. And... Brutal to the point where the army said, whoa, man, we gotta, we have to actually get rid of you because he was causing more issues than he was go doing anything good when it comes to, you know, military power. During operations, he was very much capable of conducting them, but the chaos he left during those operations was enough for the army to kick him out. Now, after he was discharged from the army, he came back to New York City and he was pretty much doing everything as he was doing prior to leaving, but this time he was also doing contracts. This means he was a hitman, a smuggler, dealer, whatever. And he was basically using that money to fund his crazy lifestyle, which was the lifestyle of any thug, which was just that weapons, drugs, women, whatever. And during that time, as it is in cyberpunk, everyone comes to an end. Because during one of the missions with his gang, he was blown to pieces by a rocket. But also keep in mind, in the world of cyberpunk, if you are relatively, even mortally wounded, there is a slight chance that you are going to be brought back to life. Because, you know, the technology there is a lot more advanced than we have right now. But even then, you need to have huge amounts of money in order to obviously facilitate you know, those medical needs, as it is today, sadly. And someone, some benefactor, actually saw how brutal Adam Smasher is, and he offered him a deal. Either we fix you up, and we give you a, you know, semi-android body, or you die. So, if naturally, Adam accepted. And that mystery benefactor was Arasaka, because Arasaka was looking for people who are unknowns. They were looking for those thugs that can basically join their army. So if you're kind of capable, you're going to be offered a deal, basically a deal with the devil. Now, Adam Smasher was fixed up and this is how he originally looked. Obviously, the, there has some changes from here to 2077, but even then, he wasn't fully cyborg as he is in 2077. There is a good reason for that, but even then, um, he basically embraced this new metal body because he thought that meat is weakness and that the supreme version of a human is going to be this robot android and he was using that because he was offered crazy weapons into his armor he was able to use that not only to work contracts for arasaka but he was also given the freedom to do freelance contracts so he was pretty much still doing what he was doing before but this time he was a lot more dangerous because when you have super good armor super good weapons provided to you by arasaka even if you're not particularly intelligent, which Adam Smasher is not, he's not some intelligent guy, but when it comes to warfare, when it comes to brutality, when it comes to physical harm, that's where his strength lies, and that's where he is really good. The motto of Adam Smasher is that there has to be as much as collateral damage as possible, so he didn't really care what kind of weapons was he using for his contracts, and if they tell him, like, we don't care if, uh, let's say, 200 more people get wiped out, like civilians, he won't care, he's going to do it. Actually, he's going to love it. He only takes contracts which are going to be brutal in nature, he likes them a lot. Obviously, he was not taking uh, contracts which might get him killed, he's not that stupid, but anywhere where he can do a lot of harm, he was doing it. Now, obviously, as he was doing those missions, those contracts, and this new body, he gained some reputation. So he was kind of known around Night City and everywhere else around, you know, United States. So another rival that was also working for a rival company, Militech, was Morgan Blackhand. 
he is the main rival of Adam Smasher and he was kinda the only person who was able to fight Adam Smasher one on one and not basically be destroyed in like the first two seconds. So obviously during his work in like even prior to 2020, there is this rivalry which um, started between Morgan and Adam because Adam was always trying to say metal is better, robots are better, android bodies are better. Meanwhile, Morgan Blackhand was going for this more humane side of being just a human even though he had one cybernetic black arm. But then the fourth corporate war happened. This is the biggest conflict which basically happened in this universe, which ultimately in the end caused a nuclear warhead to be detonated in the Arasaka Tower and basically leveling Night City to the ground. That's when Cyberpunk Red basically starts. And the meaning of Red means all of the dust which went up into the air, which basically clogged the sun, and it was red, that's why it's called the Time of the Red, because it took a while for all of that dust to settle down. And in this war, Adam Smasher was more than capable, he was doing everything for Arasaka, and he was, like, every time he was sent to the battlefield, he came out as a victor, there is no denying that, but on the other side, you had Morgan Blackhand, because Morgan Blackhand was working in Militech, so automatically, because Militech and Arasaka were at war now, Adam Smasher knew he needed to go and basically destroy his rival. And throughout all of these years, they just couldn't see each other because Adam Smasher was trying everything to get um, Morgan Blackhand to fight him. And Morgan Blackhand, the chad he is, he was just ignoring him, saying like, I don't care, I don't care what you're trying to do. And actually, when the Arasaka, the assault on the Arasaka Tower started, that's when they had a chance to square off. Because Adam Smasher was sent to Arasaka Tower to stop Johnny Silverhand and his group. Now also in that group we had Morgan Blackhand which wasn't present in Cyberpunk 2077 sadly, but yes, he was there. And as it is in the story of the game, Johnny Silverhand was pretty much destroyed by Adam Smasher. He stood no chance because even though Johnny is an ex-soldier and he's very much capable I'm telling you, there isn't a chance you, you're going to fight Adam Smasher one-on-one -on -one because being a full android and having the most advanced weaponry on himself. So after he basically wounded Johnny and all of this transpired that we know about, the team was actually leaving Arasaka Tower. So Adam runs up and he sees Morgan Blackhand. So of course Morgan Blackhand is like, oh yeah, now is the time to fight him. So even before the nuke went out, those two were fighting on the top of the Arasaka Tower. And when the nuke exploded, both of them actually like fell together somewhere into the rubble. Now luckily we do know, because Cyberpunk Red is out now, that Adam Smasher survived the fall. Morgan Blackhand was nowhere to be found, so it's safe to assume he is still alive. So then Arasaka obviously scooped up what was left of Adam Smasher and gave him the body that we know today in 2077, obviously with some revisions because um, they gave him the body in like, what, 2023, 2025, so he had a good number of years to change up some of the elements from himself, but what was important is that after the actual Arasaka Tower, most of his human body was completely wiped out, so what was left of him basically became that robot and he became more of an android than he ever was, which obviously means he was even more brutal. So after the war, pretty much Adam Smasher was on and off in Night City, he actually worked with Rogue for some time, which was kinda strange to see, but uh, fun nevertheless. Um, but after that, basically, he was just doing the same. And also, he developed quite a, how would I say, f I don't know, he was quite a fan of Johnny for some reason after that, so he basically had his Porsche and uh, Adam Smasher had his weapon, the Mandalorian weapon, so he was collecting that basically. But obviously, after that, he came back to Night City and he was appointed to be a bodyguard of Yorinobu Arasaka, and that's what you see Adam Smasher in Cyberpunk. 2077. So this is the story of one of the most brutal and one of the deadliest cyborgs in cyberpunk history.
He is very much capable, his power level, if we're not counting V and the video game, is S+, plus. there is no denying that, especially with the new tech he was packing um, in Cyberpunk 2077, because he wasn't like that before, like what you see him in 2077 is like the full android, before he was semi-android, you can see that he was, but um, he still maintains some of the human um, limbs on him. And this is everything today, this was the story of Adam Smasher, hopefully you enjoyed it, if you want to see more cyberpunk lore videos, just tell me down below and I'll make more. And yeah, this is pretty much it, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more, don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Discord, and huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out, stay classy everyone, and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.